Thank you very much, all of you, for having us Terry, our organization, as part of this amazing project. Just give me one minute. I'm trying to figure out how we can presentation. We can uh, we can open your, your presentation. I think I share screen. Okay, I think I can do it. Okay, can you see it now? Y yes, we, we okay. uh, see, but Perfect. we also open your presentation and our... Uh, oh, no, I, it's okay, I, because I will be playing it from, my, from here, if you can <laughs> all follow me. Okay, uh, as you all know, okay. you're ready. You said the calendar shows April 26, 1986. The carefree days, especially for students who had all their free time for uh, endless play in their hearts in spring. Um, it's like uh, getting in and because the East vacation will finish in a few, in a while. Although um, it's, uh, well, let me, okay, perfect. Uh, this is the day actually that changed all of our lives. And uh, we had to respond in three questions actually. What, why, and when? As we know, the reactor exploded, releasing huge amounts of radioactive materials into the air and leading to the worst nuclear accident in history. Why? We said it was the result of a flow reactor design that was operated with inadequately trained personnel. When was April 26, 1986, and this remains in the calendar for a lot of people, at least in Europe. Uh, few destinations garner reactions like quite like Chernobyl, as we know. The site of the infamous nuclear reactor explosion in April uh, 1986, the power station itself, as well as the surrounding, largely abandoned area known as the nuclear explosion zone is an intrinsic part of cultural and political lore. For Greece, uh, in Greece, the reaction actually came late, very late. The country was uh, unfortified to these issues. First thing the people had to face was health and safety, and then it was their lives and the food. Even though there was many kilometers away from Greece, and in particular in the town of uh, Pripyat, in the present day, the territories of Ukraine and then Soviet Union, was a fairly warm spring night when this happened. And for Greek students and Greek people, and especially for the kids, 1986 was um, a time where neighborhoods were not only privileged of the countryside, but also for urban centers. Children from the early morning put into the streets until late at night. They were playing and they were like having fun with nothing else in their minds. Also in 1986, um, it was a part of the education in school that we were trying to teach kids to eat fruit and vegetables every day to help them stay healthy, active and strong. And this that we tried a lot in uh, all the educational system, it came into question just a few uh, days later. The news. May 5th, the first government meeting was held in the Ministry of Defense in Greece with the Minister of Health, and the announcement suggested to avoid milk consumption, especially by young children. So you can understand how uh, long the delay was. After that, we have... Um, the next message that says avoid eating green vegetables, especially those that are difficult to wash, and there is no risk to water. So a lot of the things are contradicted among the information the, the people are giving. May 25th, and you see it's almost a month after, the Greek government assured that the radio dust uh, cloud would not come to Greece. And you all remember when the accident was. And then hospitals were filled with parents waiting to examine their children and find out if they were infected by the radioactive waves. Uh, these are some pictures from the newspapers at that time where you can see that people were just uh, crazy going to the supermarkets and getting everything that was in can, especially milk, in tons. So the government had to make sure that uh, there is a restriction and every family or every person can get up to 15 cans and no more. The children of the 80s remember our parents with the no prohibition, the hysteria and the um, 
sorry, the territorial Easter of the 1986, but also the summer of the same year remained in, uh, delibly in uh, our memory and our childhood minds. It was for many of us the first time that we felt what it's like to have an abundant wealth of the earth next to us and to be able to reach it out. We first felt fear in the face as an unknown enemy, radioactivity. It was the first time we learned this word and the first time we had it in our dictionary. Now it's 35 years later. Art continues to ask painful questions to whether our technological society is capable of controlling the forces it has unleashed. This is why we feel that this uh, movement and uh, the exhibition, it would be very important even for us in Greece because people forget. Given the cultural levity applied to Chernobyl, whether as an inspiration for filmmaker or as a case study for politicians to pressure groups across the world, it's easy to forget and the very real implication of the explosion unless we continue to remind them. And art can be a very uh, important tool to remind people and uh, make them uh, continue uh, on their lives. Third, Chernobyl can reach us about the invisible threat of coronavirus as well. Since lockdowns came into force across the world, emotional responses to immune activities are now heightened. Our behavior has changed in response to a threat that we cannot see, but which may, uh, sorry. may be until us. And the fourth, art will lead the walk to the road for recovery and development. Loss and pain will never be forgotten. We would like to thank you very much for hosting our presentation. Uh, we will uh, host uh, uh, the exhibition and uh, whatever will be held uh, under a slash by uh, our own website. Also, we're um, uh, now establishing an Instagram page will be under Chernobyl from Asteri, and we will uh, try to engage all the artists from that time till now in Greece that have uh, been inspired either by music, film, or any kind of art, paint and sculptures. Thank you very much. <laughs>